Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. Hi, my name is Keila Hodges. I am your host. And, you know, I feel like so many times when we are in a sales role, it gets a little interesting because we start learning how to perform in a way that everybody else is taught. And normally in a sales position, we talk about the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, hit the numbers, got to hit the quota, all this stuff. Um, I experienced being a part of large sales teams, but mostly with men. And there wasn't a lot of girls. There wasn't a lot of women. And what got a little difficult is being on leaderboards and competing with guys. And why was this difficult? Because I'm not designed like a man and I'm trying to win in a man's game by pretending like I am one of them. So I was in a position where I'm having to call 200 people every single day plus, and I'm having to set appointments and I'm having to close. Later on in my life as well, I had to call as a closer and try to get people to close on the phone. And what I realized is that I would have to hit these numbers. And the beginning of my sales job with any new sales job that I would be a part of, for the first month or so, I'd be really excited. And I'd wake up in the morning and I was ready mentally, physically, like went to the gym, got ready got into the flow, made it fun, and, you know, calling, 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 try to close a few deals. And after the first month or two, what I realized is that it wasn't as fun anymore. And I started getting tired, so tired, exhausted almost. And even though this was a way for me to be able to provide financially for my daughter, um, sometimes I would look at that phone in absolute disgust. Didn't want to pick up that phone. I didn't want to call anyone. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And I'm just like so tired of doing the reps and so tired of all this situation. And I would experience this really beautiful thing called burnout. Have you ever experienced burnout before? Have you ever experienced a continuous burnout where you feel like all you're doing all day long is going, 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 going. And then it's the end of the day and you're super tired, but you keep going because you're trying to close a deal because you're trying to make things happen. And I would start to feel so guilty as a mom because I didn't close anybody that day. And it's seven something at night. I have a roommate at the time who already cooked dinner for her daughter and I didn't cook dinner for mine. I feel bad. I'm like ordering food. All my daughter wants is to spend time with me. And I can't because I'm still trying to close a deal in order for us to have bills paid and everything else. And this was an ongoing thing for me. You know, as several different jobs, it didn't matter what job I would be at. I would, you know, go really, really hard. I would get a lot of success and then I would slow down. And I would feel like I would just be really mad at myself and experiencing a burnout that, you know, I didn't really know how to fix. And it wasn't until I took a step back and I started asking myself questions. Would there be a way for me to close more deals and do less work? Would there be a way to experience quality versus quantity? Would it be possible for me not to be so tired and spend time with my daughter? And so I wanted to start testing it out. And the way I came up with this idea was, you know, going through a lot of books, a lot of personal development, a lot of energy work and, and learning about feminine versus masculine energy. I started having this realization with myself. I was always in a masculine role and it wasn't my fault. You know, I feel like a lot of women are in a more masculine role these days because we're required to provide, to take care of our families. Um, society has allowed us to feel empowered by our jobs, feel empowered by making money, which I don't think that's right or wrong. I'm just trying to make an observation right now that whenever a woman is solely providing and working in this like role of getting things done, right? It's just this continuous like boom, 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 hustle, 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 grind, be driven, get it done. And oh, we're just in this masculine role all the time. And here's the issue. 
you know that there's so many more women right now that are having cervical cancer, that are having, you know, bodily issues, health issues later on in their career because of, you know, being in this consistent grinding energy to get things done. So now we're at a caveat because I'm like, how do I take care of, you know, my daughter? And how do I, you know, make sure I get things done without making myself sick? without feeling so tired and so overwhelmed all the time. And then you experience, you know, feminine energy, right? Which is what I was learning about, feminine energy. And uh, to be honest with you, like feminine girls would piss me off, okay? <laughs> like I would be around somebody and they're like, oh my God, like oh, look how beautiful this is and the sun and la 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 and flowers and my feelings and emotions and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would get almost frustrated with them because I didn't have time to think about that. I didn't have time to stop and smell the roses. And so it would be almost um, annoying or not contributive for me to be hanging around with people like that because we weren't here to get actions done. Here's the thing. Both situations for me were not supportive. Being fully in my masculine, getting things done, making sure I'm hitting hard deadlines and like all about like the numbers and like that stuff was making me burnt out, was making me tired. It was making me frustrated. I was taking so much Adderall to make sure that I was getting through the day like I was a robot. And then if I was going to be in this feminine aspect, which I didn't even know how to do at the time, I wouldn't get anything done. I feel like us as women, we get to understand the polarity of being able to use both assets that we have. Every single person has masculine and feminine energy. And if you can know how to utilize these in your personal life and business as a parent, you can help yourself be in a state of quality versus a state of quantity. You can help yourself know and have certainty over how to take care of your body and take care of yourself versus always figuring out how to do it in a survival mode. Survival mode, uh, as much as it's helped me in my past, like be able to get through and be able to handle things, is not sustainable over long periods of time. So I started testing the waters. Um, the first thing was in order for me to drop into my feminine, I got to heal a lot. I did a lot of trauma development. I did a lot of trauma breakthrough. Uh, I feel like a healing process is never, ever over. And I started allowing myself to heal in order for me to feel safe enough to open up and be vulnerable, for me to feel like it's okay to relax, it's okay to feel safe, it's okay to not do anything for a minute, that I wouldn't be in trouble if I wasn't performing. You understanding how you work is really important. Like if I was to ask you as a, a little girl, whose love did you crave more, your mother's or your father's? For me as a little girl, I craved my dad's love. And my second question to you would be, what did you have to do in order to access that parent's love, in order for you to receive that parent's love? For myself, what I would have to do is perform. I had to sing, dance. My parents would never ask me about school, but... They would love if I sang, if I was talented. You know, my dad would go to these, you know, really awesome gyms. And my dad, I remember a memory in my grandmother's house where I was really young, probably eight or nine years old. It's one of my favorite memories with my dad. And it's in the middle of the night and I wake up and we were staying over at my grandparents' house. And I go into the kitchen and my dad's in there. And he sat me up on the counter and he made me a protein shake, which I wasn't supposed to be able to have because my mom told me it wasn't good for me. And so my dad put the vanilla powder in there and a banana and the ice. And I was, and he sat me up on the counter and he was telling me the story about how once upon a time he used to smoke cigarettes, which was like super taboo in my home because we never did anything bad. And it was such a, a moment that I cherished so much. And my dad was really obsessed with like the gym. And for me to think that I was to be loved, I would have to do something. I remember meeting my stepmom for the first time at 13 years old. And my dad made me perform. He made me sing for her. And this became an overwhelming problem in my life because I always felt like I had to earn approval, earn worthiness, earn the ability for somebody to appreciate me, to care about me. It was ingrained in me as a small child. And so 
learning how to just stop and receive, learning how to be okay with just being me and that I was good enough as I am was a a long healing journey. And the reason why, you know, I'm telling you this and the reason why it's important is because you get to evaluate yourself in terms of what you're doing or not doing that might be serving you or might not be serving you. When I realized this and I wanted to learn how to heal more, I I realized that in my day to day and my sales career and everything else, all I was doing was trying to perform trying to hit numbers, be good enough, work hard. And I wasn't getting as far as I wanted to go because my body couldn't handle the amount of stress that was putting on myself. And so I tried something really interesting. Somebody told me that a feminine thing to do would be to be creative or to dance around my home or uh, take minutes, take some white space and take some time for myself. I thought that was really interesting. And so I scheduled these like walks. So I'd sit down and I would call out and I would do calls for a good hour and a half. And at the end of the hour and a half, no matter what happens, I would get up, even if I was in a momentum role, I would get up and I would leave and I would walk around the block and I would listen to one of my favorite songs that was on my playlist at the time. And I wouldn't just listen to it. I would imagine that I was in a movie seeing and you know how they walk down the street and they're like, singing and dancing and no one knows that they're singing and dancing because it's a movie. Yeah. Well, I full out went around the street (laughs) and I would sing and dance. Like I even did this in Miami down Brickle, right? So many people and I'm singing, I'm dancing and I'm like just having the great best time. Like, yeah, you know, going down the street. I would get about like one or two songs in and then I would go back upstairs and I'd put my head down and I would start working again. Really interesting giving myself intentional breaks during my day. If I worked at home, which I do now, I would give myself an intentional break for a 20 minute nap, at least once a day. Sometimes I would dance around my house. Sometimes I would do a tensional white space on my calendar and I would like, you know, do stretches or yoga or something. And here was what happened that was really interesting. At the end of every day, I would intentionally make time for my daughter I would intentionally stop everything that I was doing and be completely present with her. So my relationship with her started growing stronger. Um, Secondly, I wouldn't be so burnt out with what I was doing because I was doing a repetitive task over and over and over again that I started looking forward to the next time I was going to, you know, get on with, you know, what I had to do. I would start looking forward to the break that I was about to have. And the quality of my conversation started to get even more rich. I started allowing myself the space to be myself, to be a woman, to be in my essence. As we're moving forward in sales, as we're moving forward in our career, what if we did it in a way that really truly honored who we really are? As you're listening to this right now, you are different than me. What works for me in terms of me dancing around like the streets may not work for you. Maybe you're like, Kayla, you crazy. I don't want to dance around the street. Maybe that doesn't support you. Maybe you sitting there and meditating for 10 minutes might help. Sitting there in silence, doing nothing. Maybe drawing a picture. Maybe, you know, just going out and grounding yourself, taking off your shoes and socks, going, putting your feet in the grass and grounding yourself supports you. I don't know, but I don't know unless you try. You don't get to burn out. You get to do things in a way that supports you, that honors you, that makes you feel alive. If you get frustrated, instead of keep pushing and pushing and pushing until you figure it out, like give yourself a break. Give yourself some grace. Allow yourself to go take a minute if you need to. You are worthy of taking the time. You are worthy of intentional breaks. You are worthy of doing what supports you and what serves you. Here is the caveat. If you find yourself doing more things that are not supportive, like you're like, hey, I'm going to take a walk here. I'm going to go dance here. I'm going to do things here. And you didn't get anything done today. You are having an opposite problem. (laughs) You are busy not getting anything done. I want you to be intentional with your time. Your time is so precious. It's so valuable, especially if you're a mom. Like the time that you give to your kids, like they're going to grow up and then they're going to want nothing to do with you for a little bit call it teenage years, you know, and we get to really cherish the time that we have right now. 
I want you to have a life that's full of abundance, where you're making money, where you're living life fully on your terms. And it, it's really hard if you're a slave to your job. It's really hard if you're a slave to a repetitive actions that are making you tired and frustrated. Here's the issue. It's two things. Number one, it's you not giving yourself breaks during your day in order for you to be a woman, to be feminine so that you can relax and go back into it because you're not built like a man. You're not built to produce and hunt and go, 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 go. Like that's not how you're wired. So stop acting like a guy and trying to go, go, go. And if you're like, Kayla, I can do that. I've trained myself to do that. Yeah, babe. Yeah, I know a lot of people have trained themselves to do that. But that's why you're having so many women get sick later. And it's not supportive and it's not helpful. So the last thing that I want to leave with you here is instead of you being in a place where you are trying to do it all, I want you to honor you. Take the time out of your day. The second caveat, the second aspect to this is you have to acquire the skills in order for you to have quality conversations instead of quantity conversations. It's not about the numbers game. It is a quality game. You could have a quality level of life, which means you don't have to work so hard if you can acquire the skills to be able to do less. How do you expect to be able to close multiple deals a month to be able to double your closing rate to be able to um, bring in cash flow consistently consistently being the keyword not being a roller coaster ride consistently always being able to bring in cash if you don't take the time to acquire the skills to be able to do it some of you right now just like i used to do was trying to work harder to cover up my lack of skills and so if you're working harder with the lower skill set you're still not going to get to where you want to go Versus what if you worked less with a higher skill set and honored yourself and honored your body and honored your energy, like the levels that you will go to are absolutely unstoppable. When I first came into this business, I could barely close anything. I had a really great salary and B2B, but I had a 3% commission and, you know, like I was getting $5,000 commissions and I thought that was a lot of money, you know. <laughs> Compared to years later doing $15,000 a month, started having that be consistent, still burning myself out, burning myself out, to when I started taking breaks in my day and I acquired the skill level and I was making $30,000, $35,000 a month as a sales rep. I was doing so much less and I was obtaining so much more. I really hope that you realize how worthy you are to acquire the skills in order for you to actually obtain the light that you want. I see so many times I talk to women all day long who talk to me and they really want to get the skills, but they don't have the income, but they don't have the income because they don't have the skills. It's going to take you going to a new level and a new uncomfortability level with yourself in order for you to invest in yourself to be able to acquire the skills and do the work in order for you to be able to be in a position where you get to do less and acquire more. It's going to be up to you. My intention here is to honor you, to support you. Um, I want to know what you want to know. Like, please make sure that you are commenting in these. We always respond to them. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. That you hit that little notification bell so that you get alerted every single time a new episode drops. I want to pour into you. You get to understand that you're worth it. You're worth the time. You're worth the energy. Give yourself a break. You'd be really surprised with a few 10-minute breaks during your day and how much more that actually supports you versus you working all the way through and you being exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually at the end of every single day. I honor you. I support you. Please continue to watch it and listen to this podcast. Please give it to your friends. And um, I will see you on the next episode. 